going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all of the records that i acquired within the month of april this year in 2021 we have a lot of stuff to get through in this haul we have the stooges the donnas the latest vault package from third man records rush peter chris and much much more it's about to go deep so without further ado sit back relax and enjoy the latest finds all right, guys, so we're going to be kicking this haul off with an absolute bang. I have been wanting to get my hands on this record for months. And if you saw my March vinyl haul video, I did get my hands on this particular band's first debut album. And this is basically the same thing, but different. I'll show you what I mean. Check it out, guys. It is The Stooges. This is their first album, but... It is the John Cale mix. So the John Cale mix uh, was done first before the album got remixed. And that became the album that we basically know to this day. And uh, this particular vinyl pressing is the first time that the John Cale mix was pressed. And this exclusively came out within uh, the Vinyl Me Please subscription service. And I remember seeing a lot of ads for this when it was first announced. And I was really curious about it. But I never personally uh, wanted to sign up for Vinyl Me Please simply because I think the prices are absolutely atrocious. But a uh, Luckily, copies are still available for uh, relatively good prices, so I didn't pay out the wazoo for this, and I'm very happy that I got my hands on it. And as you see here, it features a completely different cover photo, which is really cool. Iggy and the boys, there's the back cover, and there you can see the Vinyl Me Please emblem. It has like a nice red foil touch to it. And of course, it came in this nice resealable uh, inner bag with the Vinyl Me Please Essentials hype sticker kind of talking about the particular release. And as always, we do have this kind of Japanese-esque obi strip. I'll show you what it looks like once it's on. Kind of wraps around like this. Kind of talks about the album a little bit. And as always with Vinyl Me Please pressings, it gives you a little cocktail ingredient as well. So uh, you can sip on this as you listen to the album. Also included is a really nice thick art print of the original uh, album cover photo uh, that Joel Brodsky uh, took. And inside we have a printed inner sleeve, which features a pretty cool band photograph along with a nice live shot with some liner notes. And the vinyl here is absolutely gorgeous looking so check this out hopefully this comes across good on camera this comes pressed on red vinyl with black smoke if you hold it up to like a light source you can really see the effect take place so hopefully you're seeing it really nicely it is just absolutely gorgeous nice basic white label almost kind of gives me the vibe of like a um a white label promo of sorts but on, a, on another note, this is also my very first Vinyl Me Please pressing, and I know, I've seen all kinds of pressings that they have done for various albums and such, stuff that I already own, stuff that's kind of interesting, but uh, this is a first for me, so I'm very, very excited, and I'm also just glad to be expanding my uh, Stooges collection, and uh, definitely excited to be listening to the John Cale mix of the first Stooges album. All right, so here is a record that I got from an eBay auction that I won fairly recently. Kind of saw this pop up on my eBay feed, and I placed a bid on it, and just kind of to see what would happen. If I won, great. If not, no big deal. And once I placed my bid, which honestly, I wasn't even highballing it. Like, I just kind of kept it really low. No one else touched it. So I managed to win just like that. So that's always a cool thing. Uh, anyways, I got my hands on... The Ramones, live at the Hollywood Palladium, October 14th, 1992. Uh, this is one of those legal bootleg type releases. Um, I have seen this particular show released multiple times, and I actually saw a copy of this show um, over at uh, Chuck's store, Sky Valley Records. It's a store that I always reference a lot in my videos. Came close to getting it there, but I held off on it. But when I saw this new edition pop up, I figured this would be the one to go after, as you will see why as I showcase this off. Um, the one downside 
is that it is not the full show. It's a portion of it, um, either the first half or they recorded bits and pieces of it. But um, it does feature some Ramones classics, such as, of course, you know, Teenage Lobotomy, Psychotherapy, Blitzkrieg Bop. But then we have some emphasis on their then new album, Mondo Bizarro, with tracks such as Censorship, uh, Poison Heart, and Strength to Endure, along with some other cool tracks on here. So here is the front. And here's the back there. There's Joey on the back. And this particular pressing is limited to 500 copies. And it comes pressed on very nice orange vinyl with a nice custom black label, which looks absolutely awesome. Very nice pressing overall. And uh, I don't have any live Ramon stuff from the CJ era, so I'm definitely happy to get my hands on this particular release. Give it a spin on the old turntable. Ramones live at the Hollywood Palladium, October 14th, 92. All right, guys, it is that time of the year again. Another Third Man Records vault package has dropped this time around. It is package number 47, and it is Jack White live at the Masonic Temple in Detroit on July 30th, 2014. Uh, this was around the time that he was touring in support uh, for his album Lazaretto. Um, just that period alone, I have a lot of fondness for because that is when I really started to get really invested in vinyl collecting. So that album and just, you know, listening to Jack's music from this time frame really just kind of brings back a lot of fond memories. But man, oh man, this is a juggernaut of a live set because take a look. This show takes up four LPs, and it is just full of White Stripes, Raconteurs, Dead Weather, and solo classics. I mean, right off the bat, opens up with Fell in Love with a Girl, Astro, and the Big Three Killed My Baby. Great start, you know, some early White Stripes stuff, and then it goes into Highball Stepper, Lazaretto, Missing Pieces, and it just covers everything across the board. And I am very, very psyched to uh, give this a spin. Now, this clip is going to go on a little bit because I have a lot to show in this package because it comes in a nice, sturdy box. Here's the spine. Here's the back, as you just saw. Nice kind of gloss finish with the columns there. And what is crazy is that each of the four LPs do come in their own sleeve. So I'm actually going to take the time to uh, show you everything. So right off the bat, we have record number one as the track list on the back. Uh, this particular record comes pressed on white vinyl there, as you see. And then we have the second LP. These are some awesome, awesome live shots. This one comes on blue vinyl. Then we move on to record number three. This is probably my favorite cover of the uh, of the four individual covers featured in this vault. Very nice. And then, of course, this comes on standard classic black. So as you can see, they're very much keeping in line with the... Uh, with the Jack White solo color scheme of uh, blue, black, and white. And because this is a four LP set, what could they possibly do with the fourth LP? That's a great stage shot there. And we'll take out everything. And here is the last LP, which is a great kind of marbled blue vinyl. So we have basically bits of black white and blue and it makes overall a very kind of pale blue hue to it which is very very gorgeous um just outstanding you know quality stuff these were all pressed over at third man pressing in detroit uh mastered at third man mastering all done in-house so it's it's going to be a great great package but that is not all we also have a seven inch Jack White Saturday Night Live, uh, October 11th, 2020. Uh, this is when he appeared on uh, SNL. He did um, a ball and biscuit medley as well as Lazaretto. The performances were top notch and hell, they warrant their own uh, seven inch release. There's the back and this comes pressed on standard black. And there's the label right there. 
and then not necessarily a part of the vault itself but there is also this cool little textured piece which breaks down the entire vault package with the liner notes on the back nice textured paper very nice to have i have a lot of listening to do honestly the fact that this is four lps and it's a whole show um i need to find like a day off where i can have a good couple hours to just digest everything because it's a hefty meal but nonetheless it is going to be a very good one jack white live at the masonic temple in detroit july 30th 2014 so basically, since I got my hands on that Stooges Vinyl Me Please pressing, I have been on a really big Stooges kick, and I've just been on the lookout for anything that I want of theirs and what is of interest to me, and I came across this release for a whopping $10 on Discogs, used VG Plus all around, and just, you know, I figured, why not for that price? Uh, this is... Have Some Fun, Live at Ungano's. Uh, this is a Record Store Day uh, release back from 2015. Uh, this was recorded uh, in August of 1970, so this is right around the time of Funhouse. And honestly, this release, it's them playing Funhouse Live. You have Loose, Down on the Street, TBI, Dirt, 1970 Funhouse, as well as um, Have Some Fun slash My Dream is Dead. Um, the audio quality um, is kind of bootleggish in places which is why I felt $10 was a rather justifiable price considering the quality of the recording, but also just the overall presentation of this release is spot on. And I will show you exactly what I'm talking about as I show it off. There's Iggy basically flipping the uh, crowd off there. Here's the back side. And inside, we have a massive fold-out poster insert. There's the cover right there. And it basically opens up to where... On this side, we have that album cover photo in its original state. There's Iggy there. And then we have uh, some liner notes right here that you can read as you listen to the show. And check out the vinyl. And this is one of the selling points for me because this is absolutely stunning looking. Check it out. So this is on marbled gray vinyl so we basically have black and white all kind of mixed in and just swirled around it looks absolutely gorgeous it's it's literally a piece of art this vinyl pressing here but um nah it's really really awesome and uh definitely excited to be listening to this particular live stooges release with have some fun live at unganos all right, so the girlfriend and I took a trip over to Sky Valley Records today. Hadn't been there in a hot minute because I try to be as frequent as possible, but uh, lately uh, things have just been very busy at home, and I had a free Saturday afternoon, so I figured I would make a date out of it with the girlfriend. We went out to lunch at a local diner, went to the record store, and picked up some really cool things. But the first record I'm going to show you guys is uh, one that I, uh, Chuck was actually holding for me that I had already paid him for uh, through the uh, Facebook page that I'm a part of where he sells all his stuff online. And I have been on a really big kick with this band. And I got their album Gold Medal in my last monthly vinyl haul. And I remember seeing this record basically every time that I was at the store. And I asked him if he could set me a... Um, a copy aside and he said absolutely and the album and the band that i'm talking about is the donna's spend the night this is their major label breakthrough kind of release this came out back in 2002 uh the big notable track on here is the song take it off which i remember from the first guitar hero game from 2005 um just a great track and also the donna's are just a great all-female rock man kind of working in elements of like the runaways acdc kiss and such um just a really awesome style uh this particular pressing right here is the run out groove pressing uh which has the main album as the first lp and then there are some extra studio and live tracks on the second lp a uh, very nice glossy tip-on style gatefold jacket here's the back and as you can see there it is numbered this is number 1714 nice gatefold sleeve which features uh individual band photos uh the track list and the credits and both LPs come pressed on this very vibrant piece 
of yellow vinyl, which is very nice, which also features uh, nice custom center labels, which complement the uh, vinyl very well. So very happy to have this and put it on the turntable. Uh, between this album and Gold Medal, these are the two that are the most readily available as of now. Uh, but hopefully more of their stuff gets uh, reissued or I come across it in my travels because honestly, I am really digging this band a lot. Awesome, awesome stuff from the Donnas. And now we get to the stuff that I actually bought today at the store. And this next record that I'm going to show is one that I saw posted on the Sky Valley Records Facebook group that I'm a part of where Chuck does his, you know, selling online. And I figured that the next time that I was at the store, if I saw it there, I would snag it. And also it was for a very good price too, I felt. Uh, it is, yes, Symphonic Live. Now this came out back in 2002. This was uh, recorded uh, during the tour that yes, we're doing in support of their album Magnification. And what was quite notable about that tour is that they played with various uh, symphony orchestras around the world. So um, this is, as far as I know, the sole Yes Live uh, release, which features a symphony orchestra. And honestly, they do all the standards, you know, close to the edge, Long Distance Runaround, Starship Trooper, and you and I, I've Seen All Good People, Roundabout, and then just for a little bit of added flair, uh, they include the song Don't Go, which is the sole track to be represented from their then-recent album, Magnification. And uh, this is also limited and numbered out of 3,000 copies. I have copy number 2,530, Gatefold Sleeve, which has some artwork in the track list. Pressed on 100% virgin vinyl over at Optimal uh, over in Germany. Nice uh, custom center label there. And it's the same across both LPs. And as an added bonus, they also included a CD version of the album itself. So this will go right in the car. It's nice to have two copies. But uh, very happy to uh, get my hands on this notable Yes live release. And... To keep it in the same vein as double live albums, that is what this next record is. And I came across this in one of the new arrival bins at the store. When I saw this, I immediately jumped for joy because this record has been on my horizon. I've seen it pop up every now and then on eBay. And I figured, you know, buy it sight on scene because I have yet to see this particular record in person in front of me. And uh, this is a real treat to have and also has a special place in my heart. It is Iron Maiden Flight 666, the original soundtrack. Uh, this is the live album slash soundtrack to their documentary Flight 666, which is about the first leg of their Somewhere Back in Time tour, where they basically went to all these different countries with their own uh, plane. And it's just an absolutely phenomenal documentary. You really need to check it out. And uh, what is notable about the Somewhere Back in Time tour is that they basically catered it around the Power Slave World Slavery tour. So we have a major emphasis on that particular album slash tour with Aces High, Two Minutes to Midnight, Revelation, uh, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, Power Slave, but we also get some other like cool 80s and early 90s tracks on here, such as, you know, Heaven Can Wait, Fear of the Dark, um, Can I Play with Madness, The Clairvoyant, um, just a phenomenal, phenomenal set list, and it was this documentary that made me an Iron Maiden fan, so having this live album uh, is really, really special to me. Here it is. Very nice uh, gatefold uh, sleeve right there. Printed inner sleeves. Some photos of the band live. We have some liner notes in the track list there. And uh, each record does come with a very nice custom uh, photo center labels, which I will show. And it's all different across the package, so I'll show these off one at a time. And I also should mention that this is the European import version. Uh, Chuck was telling me that the American versions have been out of print for the longest time. And uh, apparently copies are still out there overseas of this. But just to get it in the U.S., it's kind of a uh, difficult thing. So I figured that was worth mentioning. There's that. And then here's perhaps my favorite center label there with the fireworks. So very, very happy to have uh, this live piece of Iron Maiden vinyl in my collection. 
And the last record that I got, this is actually a total 180 in terms of the other stuff that I've shown. Um, I actually came close to getting this the last time that I was over at Sky Valley with my friend Chelsea. And I put it back and I figured next time I'm, I'm there, maybe I'll check again to see if it's there. And sure enough, it was there. And it is Cigarettes After Sex. This is the I EP. Um, just a great kind of dream like synth driven pop type of band i really do dig these guys i have their uh two full-length albums already and now they have a couple of eps that i'm now hunting and this is the i uh ep basic four tracks print and enter sleeve with credits just like the man says it's so black how much more black could it be and the answer is none none more black 10 points to anyone that knows that reference. And black vinyl with basic black labels. So uh, very happy to have returned to the store and managed to leave with Cigarettes After Sex, the IEP. All right, so here's a record that I got with my Discover Cashback bonus points. And honestly, it's a coincidence that every month it seems like I get records by this band. And that's simply because I am so close to be completing my collection of this particular band and their stuff is relatively easy to obtain so i just figure anytime i get points built up i can just get another album to round off the collection and this time around i got my hands on the razor's edge by acdc this came out back in 1990 uh this was the band's sort of i guess you could say comeback album because the albums that preceded this uh flick of the switch fly on the wall and blow up your video. Um, they kind of went under the radar. The 80s were a bit of a rough time for ACDC. Already kicking off the decade well with Back in Black and For Those About to Rock. But they just kind of slipped a little bit. You know, it was the whole MTV thing that didn't quite fit in with the whole thing. But uh, but with this album, you got producer uh, Bruce Fairburn who was making noise with Bon Jovi and Aerosmith. And he just really whipped this band into shape. Um, it features the song Thunderstruck, one of ACDC's most recognizable songs with that very distinctive guitar riff. It's played at every show, and it's a classic rock radio staple, along with the track Money Talks, which is good fun. Fire Your Guns, the title track Are You Ready is pretty good. And then, of course, uh, one of my personal favorites on this is Mistress for Christmas. Um, basically, ACDC having a crack at doing a Christmas song, complete with sleigh bells and all. It's a fun listen indeed. And of course, like all ACDC reissues, we have the printed uh, inner sleeve with photos and liner notes talking about the album and some background behind it. And here is the vinyl itself. Kind of needs a quick brush over, but comes with the uh, custom black center label, which just comes with uh, all the reissues. So very happy to uh, yet add another piece into my ever-growing, almost complete ACDC vinyl collection with the Razor's Edge. All right, guys, the Stooges stuff just keeps coming in. I managed to get this from a fellow Discog seller because I knew that this release was going to be quite interesting to dig into, and also partly because the box set is now almost unobtainable for a good price. What exactly am I talking about? It is this release here. This is highlights from the Funhouse sessions. Uh, this is a two LP set of various alternate takes and such from the Funhouse sessions. So basically on this release, we have an alternative version of the Funhouse album, along with various demos, bits of studio dialogue, alternate takes and whatnot. Um, a rather in-depth view into the sessions uh, for the Stooges uh, sophomore release. Uh, now, all of the recordings on this release are taken Taken from that big, complete Funhouse Sessions box set, which came out, I want to say, in the early 2000s on CD. So uh, Run Out Groove, which is a subsidiary label of Rhino, uh, put together this little highlight release, which is really cool to have. And I guess you could say that this has been superseded by the complete Funhouse Sessions vinyl box set, which came out uh, this past year in um, 2020. And that is going for double what it originally went for and i was thinking about perhaps seeking out a copy at the moment but um it's just very very high in price so i figured this release would do me well but um here is the front it features a really cool photo of the band and on the back here we have various scans of tape boxes 
There's the track list, and it even tells you which take of which song it is, as well as which reel it is from, which is rather cool, as well as the date and everything. Um, just a bang-up job in general. There's Iggy right there being propped up by the crowd. We have some liner notes and credits, and this is also numbered as well. This is number 1,930, and... Um, 2,906 copies were pressed. That's a very odd number. But anyways, it does come pressed on sort of somewhat translucent marbled orange vinyl, which looks very cool. There's that Butterfly Electra label there. Basically the same across the board in terms of the second LP, but this is what it looks like. Very nice quality pressing and uh, definitely excited to be digging deeper beyond the Funhouse album with highlights from the Funhouse sessions. All right, guys, so here is a pre-order that I have been anticipating for the past couple of months. And I immediately jumped on this because aside from the 1978 solo album, I did not have any records by this particular founding member of my favorite band, which is Kiss. It is the original Catman himself. This is Peter Chris, or I should say his band called Chris, and the album is called Cat Number One. Uh, this came out back in 1994, and I would say out of all of the Peter Chris solo albums, this is the most hard rocking sounding album, uh, very much harking back to his Kiss roots. I've heard nothing but great things about this album, and when I saw this recently announced to get a new vinyl pressing, I immediately jumped on it, and I'm very glad that I got my hands on a copy. And as you can see here, he appears with half of his face in his classic Catman makeup, kind of to distinguish uh, the past between the present. And also here is the back as well, and that's the band Chris right there. And as you can see stated on the cover, special guest Ace Frehley, the original Spaceman, he plays guitar on a couple of tracks. And this pressing is also limited and numbered. The number is actually on the front of the cover instead of the back. So as you can see right there, this is copy number 213. And inside we do have a printed insert. We have the uh, artwork on this side. And then we have all the lyrics and credits right here. And of course, to fit in with the Catman color scheme, this pressing comes on two LPs and is pressed on green vinyl with a nice purple label right there, which is very cool. I also like how the Chris logo works in that Catman design from the uh, Kiss Rock and Roll Over cover. I think that's really, really cool. And then basically, same thing with the second LP. So like I said... Aside from the 78 solo album, this is the only piece of Peter Chris vinyl that I have in my collection. Hopefully that changes with time because now I have a collection to complete with some Peter Chris stuff. And here is a random eBay find. And I have been on a bit of a rush kick lately just digging my way back through their catalog. And I have been aware of this release for a number of years. It was in my Discogs want list. Uh, but for some reason, copies were becoming incredibly scarce to find for good prices. And I was just kind of looking to see what Rush vinyl was on eBay. And I saw this particular release. And I had been meaning to get my hands on it for a while. And I kind of slept on it at first, which is kind of stupid stupid because Rush is one of my favorite bands. Um, it was, it still had the shrink wrap on it, but it was obviously open. So it must've been played, but basically BG plus near mint, let's just say, uh, this is the Rush Cygnus X1 EP from record store day, which came out back in 2017. And what's cool about this is that it features Cygnus X1 Book 1, The Voyage, from A Farewell to Kings from 77, as well as Cygnus X1 Book 2, Hemispheres, which is off of the album of the same name from 78. So they basically took those two songs together and put this little EP, since they basically complement each other. So it's pretty cool to have those two tracks together. Um, does feature some artwork by uh, Hugh Syme, who does all of the you know Rush covers and the deluxe editions and such. And we also have some nice artwork to go with uh, each of the uh, various books slash songs, which is all here. And this comes pressed on heavyweight black vinyl 
with very nice custom labels to match up the songs very nicely. So very happy to get this rather collectible piece of Rush vinyl in my collection. And certainly one that I have been seeking for a very long time, which is the Record Store Day pressing of Cygnus X1. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl haul of all the records that I acquired within the month of April this year in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the records spinning.